Welcome to another RetroNaz install video. Today we're going to look at the Sony PlayStation 3 and a bit of software called PS3 NetServe that will allow you to uh, share ISO images and games and things like that with your PlayStation 3 uh, over the network. All right, over on my Linux desktop today, you can do this from any OS, all works the same, whether you're Windows, Linux, or Mac, uh, SSH into the um, RetroNaz device. Whatever your IP address is, this is uh, the IP address for mine, yours will be different. Once in there, run RetroNAS. Okay, head to install things and choose the uh, Sony PS3, PS3 Net Server. So again, uh, this is a, a dedicated thing. It doesn't use other protocols like uh, Samba or FTP or any of those things. Runs all on its own. Um, it's quite lightweight, it's quite small, um, but yeah, it, it just um, it runs this and uh, grabs it from the website, compiles it, puts it on the system uh, and runs it as a service. So you'll notice the installer will go and create this uh, directory here, this PS3, PS3 NetServe directory, uh, and then these folders. So they're quite critical. They have to be named in the way that they're named and they have to be uppercase in order for this to work. Um, so that's done. We can go and actually look at what that looks like. So again, I'm browsing this through my uh, Linux desktop. It'll be the same whether you're browsing Mac or Windows or anything else, just browse there via whatever uh, setup you've got. So if you, one an easy way to browse this, you've got uh, SMB is an option, uh, Net A talk through Samba in RetroNAS. Um, you can use Net A talk on a Mac and uh, browse it by AFP. You can install the FTP server, browse it by FTP. There's a whole bunch of options. Uh, separate videos are all there if you want to go and see how to, to browse those. Uh, however, I'm browsing SMB via my Linux desktop. So you can see it's created my PS3 folder. All these other folders here are just uh, from previous videos where I've been mucking around with things. Um, but the PS3 folder is the one we care about. Double click to go in there. Uh, you'll see this PS3 NetServe directory. Uh, so you can put anything you like in this top level, it doesn't matter. Uh, it'll, it'll remain away from the particular service. But inside here, these things matter quite a bit. If you go in there, you'll see these directories. Uh, now they mean something, they have to be named the way they're named. Don't go renaming things at this level. Once you're inside there, you can do it if you like. But um, the directories are BD ISOs for your Blu-ray disc video ISOs. So you can either uh, drop those in there if you've already got them, or you can rip them through the PlayStation 3. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Uh, same for DVD ISOs, separate to Blu-ray. Uh, games are for exploded game directories, so you can, inside the PlayStation 3, you can copy the internal contents of a PlayStation 3 game as files, or you can rip the disc as a ISO. You've got both options available to you. Um, if you've got exploded file directories, they need to go into this games folder. Uh, if you've got a PlayStation 3 disc ISO, uh, no matter what format, it's got to live in PS3 ISO. Uh, as, a, as an ISO file. Uh, PS2 ISOs for your PlayStation 2 games, same for PSP, PlayStation Portable, and PSX, which is the Sony PlayStation 1. Uh, now, I haven't tested PS2 ISOs. I've got a real PS2, so I don't play on my PS3. I also don't have one of the um, back compat models. I've got a slim, so it's a software emulation, so I don't bother. But if you've got a back compat and it can play um, PlayStation 2 games with proper hardware, drop your PlayStation 2 games in there. I have been told that you can't stream those over the network. They do have to be copied back to the PlayStation 3. I haven't tested that and I don't have the capabilities to test that at the moment. Um, so I'll leave that up to the viewer to test. Um, however, I am 
50% sure that the PSP and PSX ISO stuff can run straight off this network share. But definitely, I'll be testing PlayStation 3. That's what I'm focusing on today. I'll be uh, showing you in a sec how to rip a game from a disc that you own, put it into that PS3 network share, uh, and then play the game discless. You can put the disc back on the shelf and you can play directly out of that network share. Uh, so I'll show you that. Okay, so we fire up the PlayStation 3. It's been pre-modded with the uh, Rebug custom firmware, and then we'll open the Multi-Man Utility. I won't go into details on how to do that. There's plenty of great guides online. I might link to a few in the wiki. However, once Multi-Man's booted, head over to your settings and change your network servers. So we set this first net uh, net device, put in the IP address of our retro NAS device. It'll ask for the port, so leave the port as default and then label it whatever you like. This is just a name that you can refer to later. Okay, so uh, pop in the physical disk, and then we head over to the games and hit the uh, refresh button to scan for the disk. And once the disk pops up there, we can hit the triangle button, and then scroll down to create ISO, select our network share that we just configured, and it's going to start writing that out to the network share. So you can see here the sorts of speeds that it's getting, uh, around about 8 megabytes a second. So that's that's the upper bounds of what the optical drive itself can do. Just change the ISO a bit there so you can see what's going on. But yeah, it doesn't get much faster than that. And again, it's the limit of the optical drive. So nothing to do with the network or the storage at the other end. That's just as fast as we can read off the disk to the ISO. So we just cut across there. Uh, and that's finished now. So that takes however many minutes depending on the um, speed of your or the size of the game. Now we remove the disk uh, and refresh the content. This can take a couple of goes sometimes. All right, and there we go, there's the ISO. So that's the actual uh, image that's on the system and there's my disk removed. So that's not in the system anymore. Definitely reading the ISO of the network, which is pretty cool. I'm just re-refreshing a couple of times just to make sure. It can take a little while sometimes on a refresh. Anyway, there's the game again. And then we can uh, hit the triangle button to bring up this menu and then load it, or you can just hit the uh, X button to load it if you like. Okay, now we get an error here uh, because of some permissions. So let's go fix that. So to fix that permissions problem, head back into RetroNAS, go to the global configuration section here choose this fixed on disk permissions that will give you a little bit of a menu of just the top level of retro NAS. Just grab that uh, PS3 directory there, hit enter on your keyboard uh, and it'll just um, override all those permissions with something sensible and get rid of that error. Okay so back on the PS3 firing up multi-man again. Let's browse to our games and we'll hit the refresh button see if that ISO pops up. There it is. Hit the X button to load it. And that'll spit us back out of Multi-Man into the main PS3 screen. And what we'll see, hopefully once this starts up, there we go, is if we browse over to our games, we'll actually see a virtual disk. So this is the ISO image presented as a, as a disk to the system. 
and we can just uh, hit the X button there and load that up as if it was a real game. So I'm going to let this run in real time. I won't uh, cut across. So you can see kind of how long it takes for the, um, the image to load up. And we'll get into some real game audio in a second. Uh, now I do apologize in advance. I'm just recording this off my really crummy uh, phone camera and I'm, I'm picking up a lot of my kids in the, uh, the other games room I've got next to this one where they're playing their games. So you hear them in the background, but uh, yeah, you'll see what's going on. Okay, I've just quit out of the game. Uh, that'll send me back to the PS3 main screen. And I've just done that just to, to run through this a couple of times, get a couple of loads going, just get a feel for the speed. So I'm just going to jump back into the game again and pretty much just run through this cycle of loading levels over and over and quitting out uh, just so we can get a bit of a feel for the, uh, for the speed. But uh, overall, I think it's... Um, you know, anecdotally, about the same speed as loading off a, a hard disk. Um, definitely faster than the optical drive, uh, but you can get appreciation for it, I guess, here as we uh, we go through this constant uh, loading and then quitting out cycle. Network 
教えてください。波紋の使い方をどんな苦しみにも耐えます。どんな試練も克服します。Okay, so I showed you the multi-man option, uh, which is one bit of homebrew software for the PS3. Uh, this is another bit of software called Webman Mod. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can point your um, a web browser at your PlayStation 3's IP address, and you can manage it via uh, web. It also works pretty well on your phone, which is really great. Um, what I've got here is I've just got the default uh, page loaded up that um, that pops up when you load into Webman Mod. If you hit Setup. Um, it'll have this menu here about where it can find its games. If you drop this little drop down here, um, down this section here, so here's all your internal drives, whether they're USB drives or the uh, the hard drive inside the system or whatever. Um, here are the LAN settings. Now these are different to Multiman. Multiman's got one set of servers that it will look at and uh, Webman has a different set of servers that it'll look at. It'll still work, it'll still uh, point the PS3 uh, at the time that you mount the game and everything will work even though they're separate. Um, you'll see two IP addresses here just because I'm, I'm fiddling currently with a couple of different servers on my network for testing purposes. Um, but if I click on, uh, if I, I can set these and unset these, tick them and untick them and put some options in here. If you hit save, which I'll do, it'll actually ask you to uh, click here to restart your PS3. You don't have to do that. Um, I've never had to reboot my PS3 to apply these settings. Um, although if you've got any problems, obviously give it a go. So from here, I'll click on games. Now I've done this previously, um, so I don't have to refresh. Um, however, if you just hit the refresh button, what it'll do is rescan um, all the titles that it can find. Uh, and there's my Jojo game. So that's the one that I ripped uh, earlier in the video. It works fine. Um, if you click on this, what it'll do is it will um, mount the game and then the uh, the PlayStation will fire up and load it. If, you, if you've got an option to auto start a game on mount, um, I think that's somewhere in the actual PS3 settings itself, not in multi-man. 
Um, so yeah, the behavior there is depending on how you've set up your PS3. But either way, click on it, will mount the drive. Um, if you've got, um, like if you physically put in a disc and the game automatically starts up, if that setting's enabled, then it'll treat the same here. The PS3 doesn't see any difference between the network mounted ISOs and a drive. This whole software in the background is kind of lying to it, telling it that it's a real disc. Um, so that's pretty cool. All of these icons were automatically put here. Um, so uh, all of these games I've got here are games that are either ripped from uh, ISO to my hard disk inside the PS3 or ripped to my network share. And it's just gone and plucked the um, icons out of those automatically, which is pretty cool. I've got a couple of um, DVDs here. This is my um, color calibration project that I work on as well. Got those uh, video DVDs there um, and this uh, Blu-ray DVD here. So they pop up as just icons like that, which is pretty cool. Um, and then likewise, a, a movie um, and it's gone and pulled the uh, title screen out of there. So it does some cool stuff in terms of um, automatically adding some icons. Uh, and it's a nice way to manage your PS3. It's uh, a little bit easier to manage. You can sit on the couch with your phone and manage it from that. You don't have to get up and use a computer. That's pretty cool. Uh, and you can still have these options available to you. So anyway, that's um, kind of it for this video. Uh, I touched on performance. I won't go into performance numbers and show you boring graphs and things like that. Um, definitely performance over the network for me was uh, better than a spindle hard disk inside my PlayStation 3. And I've got some figures on the on the wiki. If you go to the wiki, you can see the actual um, the figures I've got there. Um, performance is probably, you probably get more performance out of an internal SSD, even with the SATA 1 port that limits you to 150 megabytes per second inside the PS3. You probably get slightly better performance with an internal SSD. Uh, the downside obviously being that you don't get the uh, space so um, if you've got a retro NAS device and you've got you know some whopping big 12 terabyte plus drive plugged in there um, loads more space than you can physically fit inside a PlayStation 3 and because you've got the bigger uh, three and a half inch drives you can go right up past what gigabit can deliver so uh, yeah performance wise I reckon over the network comparable uh, a little bit less maybe 90% of what an internal SSD can do but certainly much much faster than an internal spindle based hard drive they don't get very fast um, and miles faster than the optical drive uh, you know probably eight to ten times faster than the optical drive which is pretty cool um, anyway plenty of options there happy gaming